I just want to watch TV and just binge and forget about life. And I'm watching and all of us trying to choose something to watch. And oh, there I am. And it's like, oh, it was so, it's so weird. It's like an episode of Black Mirror. After a four year hiatus, Black Mirror is finally back. Season six is now streaming on Netflix, and we're taking a look behind three of this season's five episodes with the stars themselves. Warning, if you haven't watched the season yet, spoilers ahead. Up first, Joan is Awful follows an average woman who is stunned to discover a global streaming platform has launched a TV drama adaptation of her own life, where she's portrayed by a big Hollywood star. What message do you think this episode sends about the current era of peak TV that we're in, and what do you think about it? When we started shooting the episode in September, we were like, this is an incredibly timely uh, subject. And But now that it's being released, it has become so wildly timely. And, you know, we, with the advances in AI and with the writer's strike happening, um, I'm so excited to be a part of a, well, Black Mirror, period, but a part of a, an episode of Black Mirror that I think will get conversation going uh, in an even bigger way. When Joan's life becomes a TV show, she loses her sense of anonymity and misses it, which is something the episode stars can relate to. Yes, I miss it. I miss it sometimes, but the, the, the great thing going in my favor, I forget. I forget that I'm famous. And I'm just like doing whatever I'm doing. And so sometimes people go, oh, hi, and I'm like, what I, where do I know this one from? Where do I know this one from? Doesn't ring a bell. And then I go, oh yeah, no, I don't know this person. That person knows me because I'm famous. You know what I'm saying? And, or sometimes I'm just, I just want to watch TV and just binge and forget about life. And I'm watching and all of us trying to choose something to watch and, oh, there I am, and it's like, oh, it was so, it's so weird. It's like an episode of Black Mirror. And I, for my whole life, I keep forgetting at moments, and that's a blessing. While most episodes of Black Mirror take place in the not so distant future, this season tells a story set in an alternate 1969 in Beyond the Sea. What do you make of Charlie's decision to set this episode in the past? As an actor, I love being able to, um, you know, get lost in a different time. The costumes, I feel like, and the hair and makeup even, really, it just makes it easier to, you know, transport yourself to another time and like to walk differently and to talk differently and all these things. And the sets were just so amazing. So, you know, so from a selfish standpoint, um, I love, I absolutely loved being able to film something that took place in, in the 1960s. I definitely felt the same way, like just the selfish side of it. Like I was like, yeah, I want sideburns. Yeah, I want to wear those clothes. The other thing was Charlie was saying that he felt and John and I had talked about this as well, that like setting this story in a pre Manson uh, family murders sort of environment and bringing this into a sort of retro futuristic futuristic place in a time of sort of extreme optimism about the future and about technology was was a great way of kind of juxtaposing the uh, the the beginning with the climactic end you know that it was so from such optimism to such dark, such bleakness near the end and if you were to set it now it'd just be a much more cynical take and he i think he wanted something that wasn't so cynical from the beginning mazy day is also set in the past the episode takes place in the mid-2000s during the heyday of paparazzi culture and follows a photographer as she tries to hunt down a troubled starlet. A message you could take away from it is that maybe we've all been actually living in an episode of Black Mirror for quite some time now. What's your take on the message of this episode and what do you hope that viewers take away from it? Perhaps, you know, reflecting on exploitation, on celebrity culture, on in what ways has celebrity culture shifted or not shifted? In what ways do we continue to be voyeurs in our everyday lives, not just towards celebrities, but toward the at the everyday influencer, the everyday person who's just posting whatever they want online and how we are always watched now. Danny Ramirez says that when he first read the script, he drew parallels to his own life. I was in the middle of Top Gun press, and so we were also under the, the watchful eye of a lens. Um, it was just interesting during that time and, and, and the timing of it all, just 
it felt serendipitous, but also like, yeah, no, it was, it was just exciting. It was, it was, I'm thrilled to be a part of it and, um, and thrilled to have meditated on what that relationship is with celebrity and the paparazzi and, and the public. And if you've seen the episode, you know it has a wild twist. What was your reaction when you read the twist in the script and how do you think the audience is going to react? I was shocked, uh, really shocked. And, but again, in, in, even though it's a slightly different format to what uh, Black Mirror episodes previously has been, it, it does, it has a similar effect. It, you know, it leaves you very thought provoked and uh, invites discussion and, and, and challenges your ideas of the world and your views uh, and your moral compass as well. And uh, I think, I thought it was epic and I was really excited to dive into that. For more on season six of Black Mirror, head to THR.com. For The Hollywood Reporter News, I'm Tiffany Taylor.